Friends, I love tacos, especially tacos al pastor, but I do also have a problem. You see, I live in Germany, and like most of Europe, Germany is a Mexican food desert. Even when I try making them myself, it's like every part of this recipe requires some form of special Mexican ingredient that I simply don't have access to over here. For the meat marinade, I'll need Mexican herbs and chilies. For the tortillas, I'm gonna need masa harina. When it comes to green salsa, tomatillos are the signature ingredient, and good luck trying to get your hands on those over here. But don't worry, if you like me are having trouble sourcing Mexican ingredients where you live, this video is certainly for you. I developed a recipe that satisfies my deepest taco cravings and it's got it all. Succulent meat, freshly made tortillas and even salsa verde. And guess what? This recipe only uses super basic ingredients that you should be able to find in most supermarkets pretty much anywhere around the world. Mexican people, Please forgive me. Welcome to the internet's most outrageous taco recipe. But first, let me introduce you to this video's sponsor, Frankfurter Brett. Originally founded by two foodie brothers, Frankfurter Brett is nothing short of a new way to think about organizing your cooking workspace. Instead of a hodgepodge of small bowls and food scraps on and around your cutting board, you can finally cook with the clarity you always crave and focus on creativity in the kitchen instead. I've been using and loving Frankfurter Brett since before I started making food videos on YouTube, so I am genuinely very excited to promote it today, but you don't have to take my word for it. We're gonna be using it quite a bit in today's video so just see for yourself and we'll check back in later. Let's kick things off with a shocker. We're ditching the Al Pastor spit and instead are opting for scrumptious carnitas that are super simple to make at home. For that, you wanna grab a fatty cut of pork like the neck and chop it into big old cubes. Season generously with salt and add just enough water to cover. You don't even need to add any other seasonings for now, but I'll add a little something for extra pizzazz. Typically, you'd use Mexican oregano, but good luck finding that in Germany. So, we're using a store-bought Italian herb mix with marjoram, thyme, and Italian Italian oregano in it, it hits some of the same notes. Stir it in, bring to a boil, and then let it simmer on medium-low, giving everything an occasional stir until the water has fully evaporated. This should take around two and a half hours, and by that time, your meat should be melt in your mouth tender. But wait, it's missing flavor, that earthy, smoky goodness, so what's the deal with the red bell peppers, you ask? Well, without Mexican chilies, let's see if we can MacGyver a tasty substitute. First, we'll roast the peppers in the oven for a full hour. While they're roasting, grab a slice of onion and a few cloves of garlic, crush and dry toast them on a skillet. We'll need those in a minute. By now, the peppers should be charred and blistered. Peel them, discard the stem and seeds, but keep the precious juices. Add everything to the cup of an immersion blender, along with the toasted onion and garlic. Now for a sneaky hack, add a piece of dark chocolate for depth and complexity, a splash of red wine or regular vinegar, a bit of smoked paprika, not too much, you know, some earthy ground cumin and more of those mixed Italian herbs. Blend everything together, allowing it to still be a little bit chunky. Mix this concoction into the carnitas and give it a taste. Adjust the salt level to your heart's content, et voila, your carnitas are now ultra juicy and bursting with aroma. But they still need their companions. So let's get to our salsa verde. Jalapenos are the ideal choice, but we're mostly using green bell peppers today as our generic stand-in. Roughly dice them along with a large onion, reserving a quarter of the diced onion for now. <laughs> Saute the peppers and quarter onion in a skillet on high heat until they're lightly blistered and toasty, then add them to the immersion blender cup. Add a bit of raw onion, a clove of garlic, pinch of salt, a squeeze of honey and the juice of one lime. And now hold on to your hats, folks. Normally a tomatillo would be the final classic ingredient, but those are as rare as unicorns around here. So I'm suggesting this, a firm green kiwi. Yeah, I know, but it's tart, tangy and most importantly green <laughs> with specks of white and black. So blend everything until smooth, transfer to a container and let it cool down and while that's cooling, finally dice a tomato and chop some cilantro. Mix these into the cooled down blended salsa and adjust the salt level to taste. It may look like guacamole ordered on Wish, but it's actually kiwi salsa verde. <laughs> But hold up, we need to talk about tortillas. Classic corn tortillas require Mexican masa flour, which is another one of those hard to source ingredients for many. So we're making wheat flour tortillas, but with a twist. That's toasted corn flour. 
to make it dry toast regular corn flour in a skillet until deeply toasty but not burnt. It's now crazy fragrant and we'll use 25% toasted corn flour in our tortilla recipe for a hint of that delightful corn aroma. Stir in a pinch of salt, then add boiling water and a bit of vegetable oil. Quickly mix everything together, first with a tool and then with your hands. Being careful not to burn your precious fingers, of course. Once the dough comes together, let it rest covered for 20 minutes. Meanwhile, a quick chat about pineapple. I could probably find a fresh one, but let's not be snobs here. When I just want a few pieces on a taco, give me a break. Chop up some canned pineapple and it'll do the trick, I promise. Now back to our rested dough. Divide it into 35 gram balls and working one ball at a time, roll it out nice and thin. This dough should be a breeze to handle. You can use an upside down bowl or cookie cutter to get a picture perfect shape. Now heat a nonstick pan to medium high and one by one, toast the tortillas on both sides. Use an offset spatula to help yourself. This step is actually super fast, taking probably under a minute per piece. Just be sure to keep the finished tortillas snuggled into multiple layers of kitchen towel. You want to let them rest in there for at least five minutes as this is crucial for getting them nice, pliable and tender. And so we're ready to assemble our tacos, but before we do, let me thank this video's sponsor, Frankfurter Brett. You've just seen it for yourself. My Frankfurter Brett truly makes cooking feel more intuitive and effortless. If you are into this as much as I am, don't miss out. Frankfurter Brett comes in a couple of different models and they also offer tons of super helpful and well-designed accessories to turn your kitchen into a professional workstation. If you use the promo code ANDONG, the lovely folks at Frankfurter Brett are gonna give you 10% off. Check out the link in the video description to find out more about the world of Frankfurter Brett. But now let's get back to our tacos. Spread out three tortillas, then add a good saucy chunk of carnitas to eat. Top with two dollops of our salsa verde, a sprinkle of diced onions, a few pieces of pineapple, yeah that pineapple, and a generous sprinkle of lovely cilantro. A few pieces of lime for garnish have never hurt anyone and also now's the time to snap some picks for the gram. These tacos came together so well you'd honestly never guess they were made with ingredients from a German supermarket. And by the way, Kuya Api is back in town and naturally I had to let him try these tacos. And if his reaction isn't a seal of approval, then I don't know what is. 